okay, just like there start you go. talking. Uh, yeah, we're still here. We're still sitting in the same chair. Yeah, yeah. So, all good. <laughs> um, so my usual first question at the second part of the podcast is, uh, what's the role of spirituality or religion in your life? Uh, I mean, okay, so I was raised Catholic. Mm. Um, my parents got a divorce. Uh, so that was interesting in the Catholic Church. <laughs> yeah. Um, I... I always kind of felt taken advantage of a little bit in some of my uh, my kind of church experiences, especially ones that had like uh, youth worship sort of like yeah. services and like bands and things like that. Mm-hmm. Because I was, you know, I was already playing in the VFW like as a teenager, you know, mm-hmm. playing like four hour sets, you know, mm-hmm. just Tom Petty, you know, the, I, I, we would do everything, but um, that sort of stuff. Like I was playing like classic rock. Yeah. Well, and so I had a PA and I had a van. I had all this stuff. And it was like, wait, but you wanted me to play on Sunday for no money. And I'm not really sure if I'm even into all this stuff. Um, so I had <laughs> I had like a definite aversion to all of it. Mm-hmm. It's definitely been um, a process of maturity for me. You mm-hmm. know, there was, there was a period of time that I just, I wanted to hurt people around me by saying things like, I'm agnostic or I'm atheist or this and that, you know, Mm -hmm. I just, I wanted to establish my independence so much. Mm -hmm. I really, what it came down to is I didn't have, um, the, the information or the ideas that I could really articulate actually how I felt. Mm -hmm. Uh, and a lot of it came into culmination when my sister's kids, one, one Thanksgiving in front of everybody asked me, um, if I was a Christian or if I believe, if I believed in Jesus or some, something like that. Mm-hmm. And on the spot, it just, it finally clicked. It was sort of like, well, I don't, I don't really know if I'm a Christian or not. What I would say is that if Jesus came back today, I think he and I would probably get along really, really well. Mm-hmm. You know, I always try to try to help people be nice to people. Um, I, I, I truly believe that the secret of life is people being together Mm. Uh, it's not being isolated, you know, <laughs> having our own opinions and choosing sides. Um, so in all that, you know, if that makes me a Christian, awesome. But whatever this modern day version of, you know, having the biggest church and the biggest mm. production and this and that, I don't think any of that has to do with religion. I don't think mm. any of that has to do with spirituality. And that's just my opinion. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, I don't want to put it on anybody. I don't want to make any fe- anybody feel bad. And I definitely don't want to offend anybody else in their faith you sure. know this is this is for me and me only and i don't want them you know i, I i'm not offended by them either for mm-hmm. for a really long time it was easy to go like well they're christians so you know this and this and this are all going right. to be true and and that was immaturity as well you know mm. um so i would say that uh i'm extremely spiritual i believe mm-hmm. that a lot of things happen for a reason i believe in uh good karma or good vibes or good juju or just sure. being good what you put out you get back you mm-hmm. know um, a lot of the sort of basic things, golden rule, all this stuff I, I agree with. Um, when it comes to, um, you know, sexuality and it being, uh, you know, sort of dictated by something that was obviously written by men and edited <laughs> over and over and over again throughout the years, uh, I, I don't think I'm going to listen to that. You know, I, I think I'm, I'm going to stick with the things that I already know. I, mm-hmm. I love people and... Um, and, and I want to figure out a way to make it work. And as long as you're not hurting anybody, there's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, I don't have like one way of, of defining the way that I feel, but I, I have a problem with not organize or sorry, with not, I, I don't have a problem with religion. I don't have uh, a problem with assembly. Mm-hmm. I just have a problem with like organized religion as a business. It's a mm-hmm. huge problem for me. Yeah. Uh, and, and not to say that we can't talk, that we can't be friends, that, sure. you know, that doesn't mean anything yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. It's just that that's something that I don't choose to be a part of, Yeah, yeah. you know, for, for very specific reasons. But at the same time, there's so many amazing things that happen in those organizations, you mm-hmm. know, and I've, I've had countless conversations about this with my mother who has very, very strong faith. <laughs> yeah. My, my father and my stepmother as well, who have very, very strong faith and, 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 and their respective religions. But, um, when we had these conversations, I started to realize like, okay, there are things that I'm missing out on. There are things that my children are missing out on. Mm. And so it's really just, it's up to me to figure that out. So, you know, on a Sunday, oh, when, when I'm finally home <laughs> on a Sunday, <laughs> uh, we, we want to start doing things like volunteering and helping other people and, and that sort of thing. And getting, you know, th- what those mission trips do, what those 
because uh, I did. I grew up, you know, cooking for people uh, at mm-hmm. a soup kitchen and stuff like that yeah. in Ponca City at, at this church. I mean, I remember doing it vividly over and over again. And I love that. And I love mm-hmm. talking to people about it or whatever. And I didn't have any problem that it was under the helm of religion. But when it, when it was asking me to do certain things or it was asking me to not associate with certain people because uh, the type of religion or whatever it was, sure. it just, none of that stuff just felt natural to me. And, yeah. Um, I think I was born at a period of time that I could question those things and not be kicked out of my house. Or, sure. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, if all that stuff might have happened earlier, I might have felt a lot more pressure to, to stay active in a mm-hmm. specific church or religion. But, um, I yeah, I, I, I like everybody too much to pick one sort of thing. I, <laughs> I pick a lot of small things from each. And one of, one of my favorites is sort of a Buddhist idea, and I'm sure I'm butchering it, but the idea is that you take care of everyone else by taking care of yourself. Mm-hmm. And it's not... It's not meant to be take, taken as being, you know, it's, this isn't Scientology. This isn't like, <laughs> I'm this, this great person or whatever. It means that you make proper decisions for yourself. You make healthy decisions for yourself, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and only from there can you start to support other people. Because yeah. if you start to spiral out of control with whatever it is, if it's addiction or, or mental health mm-hmm. or this and that, you're not taking care of yourself, you cause giant ripples in other yeah. people's lives. They yeah. care about you, you know. So... Uh, it, it, of being healthy and what that means to you and taking care of yourself and what that means to you. I think you can't really affect anybody else's life unless you're actively trying to do that as well. Yeah. You know, when you could really negatively affect other people's lives if you're neglecting that. So, yeah. uh, you know, as an, as an artist, um, and loving other artists that have been, you know, horribly tormented and have left before their time or this and that, you know, I, I don't know if I would want to, change that necessarily but mm-hmm. it would be nice you know to, to have the opportunity to talk to people about that sort of thing yeah i just don't think it was very popular you know of, uh, of an opinion to have to say like well you know uh maybe just be yourself <laughs> you know what i mean and <laughs> yeah. maybe that's okay and it's just it's tough i mean we're, we're always going to have problems and that's not the secret you know to eliminate problems or eliminate struggle that's the worst mm-hmm. thing you could do then we just become, you know, an entire world of mediocrity. Like struggle is, is mm. good as long as we're making positive progress. Yeah. You know. But yeah. I, does that answer that question? Yeah, yeah, way? it does. <laughs> cool. cool. Um, so in, at least in the lips, and i am done a little bit of digging into color music, but like psychedelic experience is sort of a, a big part of sure. what makes... Uh, not just the lips music, but just a lot of music in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what is sort of your experience through at least being involved with the psychedelic style, but also like what is psychedelics trying to communicate? Yeah, uh, man, I, I just had a really, really interesting weekend up at Alex and Allison Gray's uh, Cosm. Awesome. Which was a whole, it's a whole different thing up yeah. there, you know? Um, the psychedelic thing, it can be taken in so many different ways, which Mm -hmm. I think is kind of interesting. And everybody just assumes that we're like whacked out on drugs all the time. And that's how we make the music that we Mm -hmm. make. Same thing with color music. I mean, like, I think, I guess it comes off as psychedelic because it's an easy way to go like, what? Colors. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Colors. And I'm not really sure what type of genre it is, but it's like out there. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like whatever that is. Um, but that's not necessarily what we were ever really trying to do. We just can't help but sound like anything other than ourselves. Sure. You know? And then with the lips, you know, I'm, I'm not involved with all of, of the recording or anything like that. But what I can say is like, you know, everybody thinks that, you know, because of the, the art that Wayne draws and the way that our, our live shows mm-hmm. look and because of all the chances that are taken in the studio, um, that, you know, they're these drugged out freaks or whatever. Sure. And that's just another thing that I would say to students is like, you know, when you say, oh, yeah, Jimi Hendrix, you know, he was amazing. He played on LSD or whatever. It's like, wait, Hendrix was amazing first. Sure. <laughs> he was he was incredible first. Mm-hmm. It was incredible that he could play on drugs like that. Yeah. You know, uh, but that drug did not make him play mm-hmm. that thing. You know, yeah. uh, I would, you know, I, I would say that the idea of psychedelics and the way that they can alter your mind and open mm-hmm. you up. Absolutely. I mean, it's mm-hmm. proven. It's, yeah, yeah. It's it's totally obvious that, that that can happen. Now, at the same time, it can help you realize that you have some totally serious problems 
at an yeah. earlier age than they might have surfaced. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it's like it's like anything. I mean, I don't I don't think drugs are good or bad mm-hmm. necessarily. Drugs are. You know, it's it's how you use them. It's the type of person that uses them and all mm-hmm. that sort of stuff. Uh, and I go back and forth on that. I mean, we we always kind of say that uh, there's a lyric in in a Flaming Lips song. It's like legalize it, every drug right now. Um, give people the choice to do it. I mean, I, I would be foolish to think that everybody would make the right choice, you know, mm. for themselves. Sure. And you can't really know what that is, what that right choice is, until you've tried it. Mm-hmm. But to me, that's that's life too, man. Yeah. You know. I remember when my my son was about to be born, and people were like, "So you're gonna quit color music, right?" Like, you know, it's, a lot of drummers were asking me that too. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, "Oh, you gotta quit the band. Huh? You guys need a new drum." You know, that, it was that sort of thing. But everybody was like, "Yeah, you, you're gonna quit," you know, because you got this thing to do now. And it, it's like, wait, well, you know, first of all, what does that say to my kid? Like, if I quit doing the thing that yeah. I love the second that they're born, mm-hmm. uh, and man, I would I would hate to end up resenting them because I made this decision yeah, that I exactly. thought was the right thing to do or whatever. You know, you have a child and you bring them into your life. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of times people have kids for just a good reason to become mediocre because they were going to be <laughs> mediocre anyway. You know, <laughs> they're just going to grow up and be boring. Like I'm going to blame it on my kids. <laughs> uh, but you know, I, I bring, I brought him and I brought my daughter and my wife and I both brought them into our lives and, and uh, they get to be a part of it for a while and mm-hmm. we do our best by them. And then we kind of put them off. Uh, on their own to to do their own thing and to do that yeah. themselves. But the idea was that we took a chance, that we took a, a leap, you know? Mm-hmm. We didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. But shit, man, I didn't know what was going to happen in my own life without <laughs> yeah. having a child, you know? Like, yeah. it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen next. You try to make the best decision. If you do care about what you're doing, you read a book or mm-hmm. you ask some people and uh, you know, most importantly, hopefully you listen to your gut or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that's the same thing with if you want to talk about listening to music, if you want to talk about taking drugs or whatever, like, yeah, that's that's what it's all about. It's like, well, I mean, am I in a good spot right now that I want to take a chance or this and that? But mm-hmm. I mean, I think maybe you were talking more about the the artistic sort of aesthetics of, of well, psychedelic, or it, but then also like the the it's a, a spiritual revelation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, and I think it's whatever you want to give it weight mm-hmm. to be, you know. Like some people are like, hey, that was a good weekend. And other people are like, that changed my life. Yeah. You know, and you took the same drug and had sat in the same place or whatever. But um, if you, I think if you're in need of something right then, mm-hmm. that, and you need that to be a catalyst, then it absolutely can be. You yeah. Know? I mean, and we're talking about altered states and mm-hmm. enhancement. You know, it's nothing that I would suggest. There's some people I know shouldn't do drugs, you know. <laughs> and there's other people that would be like, well, if you think you're ready to try it, you should try it. Sure. And do it in a safe place or this and that. Um, but I can't. It's it's tough, you know, because we were up there with Alice and and, uh, and Alice Gray, and and they've obviously had a lot of experiences. Yeah, and uh, it was interesting. The couple of artists that they were interviewing in the two days that I was up there, they both had very similar answers. They were sort of like, you know, did did psychedelic drugs influence your your work? And they're like, nah, not not really. I tried it, and I d- didn't really like it, but. I do like doing really radical shit with colors and shapes, yeah. and you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, and it, it lends itself to it either way. So yeah. it kind of goes along with the same same philosophy, I guess I have about religion. It was like I, all I know, all I am certain of is that I I'm not certain of anything, you know. Yeah. So I mean, I never really set out to be in a psychedelic band. I'm not sure if the Lips um, even set out to be a psychedelic band, but it's sure. kind of like what you what you get sort of. I wouldn't even say pigeonholed as, just labeled as, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it lends itself to a lot of uh, a crowd that, that mm-hmm. likes to have those experiences. Sure. Uh, but at the same time, it lends itself to a crowd of people that just like to, to be weird for a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, or to try something different or this and that. I think it all, it all goes together. But yeah, I, I personally have never had any like sort of life changing drug experience or mm-hmm. anything like that. Um, but I know people who swear by it, you know, yeah. and like, who am I to say, well, because I don't have faith in a specific religion, that means that yours isn't real. Right. right? And the same thing with, with drugs. Like, Hey man, if you, if you felt that, that's rad. Like I yeah. just have a headache, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I have to believe that, you know, mm-hmm. if somebody's swearing to me, they're telling the truth and I choose to believe them. Like, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, psychedelic, the, 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 the name 
all together is, is kind of funny, I mean, because it could be a type of music. It could be obviously a type of experience or yeah. a drug or an aesthetic or something like that. Um, there's the same thing with like punk music. Like, is it is it real punk? Is it new neo? <laughs> this you know whatever it, this new psychedelic wave or whatever. It's like just mm. just make the music you dig, man. And yeah. like critics are gonna have to label it something to be able to talk about it in shorthand sure. and to be able to reference it to other things. Like maybe don't get hung up on it, but keep making cool shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I always have these. Uh, well, they're short questions from my end, but uh, yeah. <laughs> just pointed questions. I don't that, give short that, answers. Yeah. Ever, um, God? Question mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I I call it God. Um, I I call any thought that I have um, where I don't feel like I'm in control and I'm, you know personally asking for help i call that a prayer and i didn't mm. used to that was that was mm. one of those things it's like i don't pray but i do all the time so mm. if i don't have control or if you know my my wife is like giving birth to my child right now and and i need some help you know yeah like i'll call that a prayer i, I, I wouldn't before you know before i had this sort of revelations of like comfortability and being like okay you know what like i don't have an axe to grind anymore i just mm. I finally figured out how i feel and then i'm not going to be pushed around anymore sure. that i'm not going to be persecuted for feeling the way that i feel and knowing that it's right hmm. for me yeah. you know so once i got to that point it was just like yeah man if i'm ever going like i really wish this would happen or yeah. I, I love this person so much i hope they're okay you know yeah. all that shit that's prayer man like yeah. I, you know and if it's it, it, who am i saying that to you know yeah, it's like yeah. well i don't want to come up with a better name so let's just call him god sure you know? yeah it's and i and i think in a weird way we're all that way we just get Locked up. I mean, it's that, that adage that the devil's in the details, mm. you know, and that's that's really the, the details, the tiny little things that are splitting us up. Yeah. So we're focusing on those as a people, as a, as a human <laughs> race. We're focusing on the things that make us different instead of the overwhelming evidence that makes us exactly the same. Yeah. You know, uh, but whatever, you know, I could, I could kind of soapbox <laughs> it forever. But yeah, God, yes, absolutely. Prayer, uh, yes, in some form. Yeah. Whether you call it that or not, everybody does it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, free will question mark. <laughs> um, this is hey Andy Yurick, you know my my business law teacher at Oklahoma State kind of opened me up to this. He said, "Is there really such thing as free will?" And to to the best of my knowledge, I would say no. Mm. You know, um, you can't be free to choose something that you don't even know exists. Yeah, you know. Uh, so if you're not exposed to it, there's no such thing. And if mm. there's a factor of like. And that was another thing that always sort of bothered me with, with religion, or especially with Christianity. It was like, wait, you mean all those people in Africa that nobody's actually physically made it to mm. them and taught them about this yes, mm. yet they're going to hell because they don't know about it? <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't know. I have to check with Jesus on that one, but I don't think he would be very cool with that. You know mm. what I mean? Um, so it was, it was those sort of things. Like, yeah, I mean, if, if you don't have free will to do anything, you know, to, to learn to drive or to do anything yeah. because you've never been around it. You know, it's just... Uh, whatever that is, I, I would say no, in that we we kind of fool ourselves into the fact that we have that. I mean, inner city kids making it to you know having a, a, a full on college education. It's like it's like well, it's there if they want it. That's not true, yeah. man, because we know that it, it's not just money that gets somebody through college. Mm -hmm. We know that it's having a support system and having people around you that believe what you are doing is important. Yeah. If you're the first person to go to college in your entire family and every time you come home, people are like, why are you doing that? Shit? Why are you doing that? Why are you spending that money? You're never going to be any better. Mm -hmm. Why don't you just come work for, with me? This and that. It's like it's all this sort of stuff that yeah. goes around it. You know, it's not just the opportunity to do it. So I don't know. Uh, yeah. Don't know. What's your answer to that? <laughs> uh, to free will. No. Yeah. Uh, and then because there's enough science to kind of. <laughs> it, n not necessarily that I know, but sure, it's, it's more, sure. it's more like, choose to believe. Yeah. 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 It, it, it's like, uh, be careful how much you're backing up there. Oh, uh, thank you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Um, but like, it seems to be leading towards the answer being no. Yeah. Uh, I'm, with <laughs> I'm with you. I mean, it, you could make some argument, I'm sure. And we could go hang out at a bar and talk mm -hmm. through it and still not get anywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, I like to believe that we don't have free will because I think if we believe like everybody has the exact same opportunity mm -hmm. and can do everything, 
that's pretty naive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, I think it would absolve me of a, a lot of feelings of guilt that I, I don't think I should be absolved of, you know? The fact mm. that, like, you know, I'm extremely fortunate. I'm white, heterosexual, male, born in America to mm -hmm. an upper middle class family that never needed anything in his entire life. And if I also take the position of saying free will, everybody can do whatever they want, everybody can do what I did um, as easily as I did it. Right. That I just don't, I can't reconcile with that, mm -hmm. you know? So <laughs> does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah. Um, so what is good behavior I, I i like asking about morality and so like what is good and how do you be good <laughs> at least I, in, in your opinion oh obviously. man um yeah like it kind of goes down to you know it's everything you do even if it's good it's still self-interested you know mm -hmm. like, like that kind of thing um what is good i mean i, I don't know i think you you can't just know it. You have to be taught it and you have yeah. to, you have to feel it even if you're taught the opposite way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you're taught to hate or you're taught to separate or, um, you know, take sides or this, that sort of thing, you have to have a feeling at some point that that's wrong, mm -hmm. you know? And I think everybody has those feelings, mm -hmm. but some people are more susceptible to be, either indoctrinated or not want to upset the person that's sort of teaching them that sure. this thing is right or wrong. Um, yeah. What is good behavior? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of laid out for us, right? You treat other people the way you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. It's only fair. Mm -hmm. right? Shit. Treat other people better than you want to be treated. Yeah. You know, <laughs> keep working on yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's a really good place to start. Yeah. You know, that's why, I mean, that's why religion isn't bad. That's why, you know, mm -hmm. not all scripture is bad. It's, yeah. the, it's the tiny little detail thing. The broad strokes, I'm in. You yeah. Know, for damn near every religion. Yeah. Uh, and they're not all that different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, it's just the smaller things that separate us. Like, Baptists can't dance, you know? Like, what's up with that? <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, that's like that's like one of the freest, most fun things to do. You know, it's yeah. like <laughs> you can dance. Like, you don't even have to own a radio. You know, yeah. <laughs> you can just yeah. dance. Like, it's it's the easiest thing in the world. But and it makes you happy, <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. Unless it's me, and you probably shouldn't dance in front of a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do we reduce the division that is sort of being created by? Our current political climate. I thought a lot about that. I've been thinking a ton about it. I just taught um, a social media revolution, a, cl a class at ACM. It's mm -hmm. all about social media. And um, it, it had a couple of different components. I mean, I think the component that everybody expected it to have was how do we navigate this stuff? How do we launch successful marketing plans and, mm -hmm. and campaigns with, with these different um, things? How do we get creative with it? And the other side of it was like, you know, is, is this a good thing that we're spending <laughs> so much time trying to figure this thing out? Yeah. You know, um, is Facebook even going to be around very much longer? Mm -hmm. Like, um, is this the tool that that's really going to sell whatever we're trying to sell? And unfortunately, like right now it totally is, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and some people are great at it and some people are really terrible at it and there's everybody in between. Um, yeah, I <laughs> don't how do we fix it? We, we all realize that at some point we have to realize that like when we say something really terrible to somebody else on the internet, it's so much more of a reflection on ourselves than it is of that person. Mm. And you will never get through and hopefully never hurt that person. But that's not true either. Cause not everybody's, not everybody's prepared to handle that stuff. You yeah. Know? It's been people, you know, especially the exposure between the flaming lips and being in, you know, and the dead pets with Miley for that, for that period of time, like uh, I, my personal life has been exposed to people I never thought it would mm -hmm. be, but I put it out there. You yeah. Know? Um, so yeah, I, I definitely had to wrestle with that a little bit, especially having kids and people you've never met before will come up and like comment on your kids or yeah. say something to you in real life about it or whatever. And that's that's a weird thing. But I, I just, you know, if it's not if it doesn't have any sort of like ill will behind it, like okay that. You may think it's okay to say that, like, <laughs> whatever. You know, your, your kid's super cute. I'm like, hey, let's just not talk about that. Like, you don't know my kid. You yeah, don't know yeah. me or whatever. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, I've, I've had to deal with that a lot. And the way that I think we fix that stuff, I talked to, or I, I, I responded to somebody when I don't usually respond to people on social media, mm-hmm. but somebody just said some outright, like terrible things that mm-hmm. I was just like this. Okay. This is too big. There's, so, there's obviously something wrong here. You know? Yeah. So I just wrote him back and, and basically said like, listen, I, I was only trying to support my friends who did something that I thought was really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way that you, you know, responded to me and the, some of the really terrible things you said in there, I I know that your response had nothing to do with me or my friends at all. It has everything to do with your life and where yeah. you're at in your life right now. Um, and and you should focus on that, man. And <laughs> and obviously, like me supporting my friends and talking about the cool things that they're doing doesn't make your life better. Mm. So don't pay attention to that stuff. <laughs> don't give that shit your energy, man. Like, yeah. find your passion and give that your energy. Mm. You know, find... One of the things that makes you happy and makes you a better person, not this person just spewing vitriol on yeah. the internet. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, so it's going to take people realizing that. I think uh, this is going to be my, my funny thing. My, my, my kids and my grandkids are going to say, what was your legacy? And I was like, I navigated having fucking social media, <laughs> you know, <laughs> my entire life for the first time. That's yeah. what I did for you. I figured out what to do and what not to do, how to interact with this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, what was it? Uh, a bandmate always brings us up. Father John Misty uh, made this sort of joke about how kids are going to be like, look at dad with his phone, you know, what a dork or whatever. It's like, man, I hope my kids are that way. I hope maybe my kids' kids are that way. Of like, <laughs> God, look at you idiot over there just like with your head in this box all the time. Like, look at the world. Like, mm. I hope that's what we get back to. Yeah. Um, but we have to start figuring out how to use the internet to bring us closer together the thing that it was meant to do in the first place yeah. to share information. Yeah. Um, I read this really great quote the other day. I'm not even sure who to attribute it to, but it was great minds talk about ideas, average minds talk about events and small or simple minds talk about people. And mm. that's where we're at right now. We talk about people all <laughs> the time, you know, and there, there's a difference in like adoration for the art of an artist yeah. and then adoration for that artist themselves. Yeah. And, we as artists are brands right now and I understand that and I have to teach that for a success in this current industry, but that doesn't mean that I have to like it. You sure. Know? I like the fact that I don't really know shit about Neil Young, but I like damn near every song he ever wrote. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's not true. I know a lot about him, but I don't know that much, you know, sure. I don't know the tattoo of, you know, the shamrock that he got, you know, on mm-hmm. his arm the other day. Right? Yeah. You don't see that stuff and, and I don't care about it either, but I, I really love, you know, his music or whatever. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like, how cool is it that you, if I wanted to, and if Neil Young had an Instagram or a Twitter, that like <laughs> I could possibly get at him, you know? Yeah. Where you couldn't do that back in the day. Mm-hmm. You know, if a band was starting out and wanted to open for Neil Young, they'd have to get through <laughs> a couple of really tough managers yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> to even consider it. And then it mm-hmm. would be like, no way. Right. Um, but if you, you know, you walk up to somebody like Wayne and you see him outside, it's like, can I open for your band? Mm. And then you hit them in, uh, on Twitter and you hit them on Instagram, all this other stuff. It's like, chances are at some point, if you're good enough, if he likes it or whatever, you can mm-hmm. penetrate that and make it through and get yeah. that word to that person that you want to do this or just let them know that you exist, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's cool. I think that's, I think that's really cool. Yeah. You know I mean? Almost more importantly, I think f- for our students, um, you know, getting a degree is very important. Having that, Having that piece of paper, having that distinction that will help you undeniably get paid more. Sure. Um, you don't necessarily have to have it to have a career. Yeah. But what I do think you need to have are, are mentors, a mentor or a series of mentors, you know, people that are doing what you want to do right now. Yeah. And you can be around them and bounce things off of it. And hopefully they're active, you know, yeah. so they can give you like real great advice on what's happening right now, <laughs> like how they're tackling it yeah and some sort of perspective be like mm-hmm. it didn't used to be this way i know all you kids are doing it like this like i don't want to do that i don't like that old sort of codger thing of like oh, i don't mess with the internet or i don't do this or that. <laughs> but we need those people to mess we need those our elders to accept you know this mm-hmm. this technology and be like see it's cool that it does that but i'm not going to and this is why mm-hmm. you know I, I i love that yeah we, 
Because the second that we sort of separate each other, it's like, well, it's old versus new, or you know, <laughs> school, you know, old school, new school of thought, or whatever. It's like, man, nah, it's, it's kind of bullshit. It's like it's all one school of thought. Yeah, let's bring everybody in, and yeah, you got to learn some technology, and yeah, you got to like slow down for a minute to <laughs> realize what the hell they're trying to say. Right. Uh, um, I can't really remember what the question was. No, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Reducing but, the division. Yeah, between. reducing the division. I mean, that's it. I mean, it, you know. Uh, with the internet, you know, I think we're the world is a teenager right now. Mm. You know, um, I'm looking forward to our 30s. Yeah, it's <laughs> probably the best <laughs> the best thing I can say. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, start saying nice shit. Start unfollowing people that that are negative or affect mm. you negatively. Um, Matt, uh, the the other drummer in the lips, like you know, he and I are. are uh, brothers in a lot of different ways i mean mm. we work together we sleep on the same bus we eat the same meals we play <laughs> the same show you know yeah we're just very very close yeah and uh he was like man i noticed this thing like if i don't look at my phone before noon my day is a lot better i said, like, <laughs> what do you mean and he said well you know i just i just don't i mean i could open my phone and there could be whatever trump did today or whatever sure. and it would ruin my day mm. or it would be another school shooting and it would ruin my day and it's like i just i, I wake up I'm thankful for for some things. I have a cup of coffee, mm-hmm. you know. I kind of get my head straight, and then I, then I'm able to tackle the world. But like when you're inundated with information that, in a lot of ways, doesn't affect you. I mean, mm. it's terrible to say that a school shooting in some other state doesn't affect you, mm. or that maybe you don't have a family member that's in the military, so a war at all doesn't really affect you mm-hmm. anymore. But it's reality. You mm-hmm. know, we're so completely separated by all this sort of stuff. So try and give your energy to the things that that you can do good with. Yeah. You know, if you're trying to create, if you're trying to, um, bring people together or whatever, like make sure you make space for that. Yeah. Because the internet and other people's opinions have found their way they pipelined into our <laughs> lives, but it's between, you know, it's up to you and me to decide whether yeah. or not we want to let it affect it. Yeah. You know? So <laughs> you can't control all the terrible stuff and all the fake stuff and whatever right. that people put out there, but you can control what, what you take in mm-hmm. and what you give power to. Yeah. So I would say that that's, that's, that's how we get better. We get closer, you know, mm. and you, you teach kids about what you think is good, you know? Yeah. There's always going to be somebody about teaching them about what they think is good. And <laughs> you are probably going to think it's wrong or whatever. So yeah. it's got to keep going, man. Yeah. Um, three more questions. Let's do uh, it. Yeah, yeah. What makes you happy? Oh man, I have a list. <laughs> Go for it. Um, if if I'm eating healthy, I'm happy. If I'm sleeping well, I'm happy. Um, if I'm with my family, I'm happy. If I'm making music, I'm happy. Um, if uh, I'm doing things like having a conversation, yeah, you know, it makes me <laughs> happy. Whether it's with a student, contemporary, or whatever. Sure. Uh, I kind of lump all that stuff in together because that's that's. I mean, when it becomes increasingly harder for me to teach, and it does every semester, <laughs> um, and to want to teach. It always comes back to that thing of like I I learn a lot of times more from students than they learn from me. You mm-hmm. know, like I'm for the most part repeating information that I've learned and, and updating yeah. it and that sort of thing. But they're always coming through with something new, and it's yeah. like, oh yeah, that's why I do it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, but uh, what else makes me happy? Um, uh, <laughs> being happy makes me happy. Um, yeah, it, it's it's pretty simple. You know, yeah. it's like. Uh, it's not things. Um, it's not necessarily even places. It's mm-hmm. like I said, it's, it's people and it's time, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. I'm able to spend time with my family, spend time making music, spend time with my bandmates, even if it's in an airport for an entire day. Yeah. I still, still love that. You know, yeah. Like to be around a thousand people I don't know and don't care about, but, uh, we're all in it together. You know, yeah. we're all in that struggle to get home or mm-hmm. sleep in our bed that night or whatever it is, you know? Um, and one thing I'm trying to be better at doing, cause I know it makes me happy is being present you know, yeah. with all the, all the things that I've signed up to do <laughs> and, and all the ways that I could keep track of them and that people can, you know, approach me or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, it's easy for me to just constantly be working and not yeah. really be with my family when I am with my family or mm-hmm. really be on stage when I'm on stage. Or this yeah. Or that. So yeah, just trying to 
being present makes me happy for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But all those things. You know? Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. Drinking water. <laughs> damn, yeah. that makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what advice do you have for people? Oh. Be honest with yourself. I think it's the main thing. Hmm. For some reason, you know, I don't know if it's like the the order of child I was, or um, you know, because I have been through a divorce with my parents and stuff like that. I don't know what it was necessarily, but it always allowed me to be really, really honest with who I am and who I want to be. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like if I'm screwing it up, I'll tell myself I'm screwing it up, and then I'll yeah. fix it. You know, <laughs> and uh, I love that. I love that quality. <laughs> uh, because you know sometimes you feel like you're out of control or whatever but Mm -hmm. if you care enough to fix it like you may not know how to fix it but you care enough so that means that you're gonna start somewhere and end up somewhere better you know yeah so um yeah to know yourself and make sure you're making decisions for yourself and not so other people will like you Mm -hmm. uh so other people will keep you around or this and that i mean if you know you are that shines through yeah and it attracts other people who know who they are yeah. Tracks a lot of people who don't know who they are, <laughs> yeah. and who think that you can do something for them or you should do something or whatever. But if you know yourself pretty well, you see that coming a mile away. Mm-hmm. You know, so for better or worse, if you know who you are and you're trying to get better or want to be a different version or a better version, it's yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty admirable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, then last question, quite possibly the hardest question I will ask. All right. Cake or pie? Ooh. Um, <laughs> either really that's a valid answer is that a valid answer yeah all right so okay right on right on awesome <laughs> i like that one <laughs> um so i mean normally the second podcast is like a conversation but like this is the second podcast but we have a little bit more time to kill so oh, okay cool uh, do you have any well, questions then, for me it would have been a cinnamon roll that would have been my answer oh hey there you go <laughs> anyway uh, do i have any questions for you yeah um yeah i mean i, I asked a couple of them um kind of in between sure so yeah, yeah we could we could talk about that a little bit more but where where do you want to go musically like uh, creatively style wise yeah how do you want to perform all that sort of stuff so um it, it's sort of been solidifying into terms now lately because uh because okay. <laughs> uh, before it was just more ideas but like even though i'm not as into like frank zappa uh i know that he sort of has this realm of like chamber music, but also performance and yeah. like it's, it's, it's all one thing. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of been my goal, uh, ever since I kind of started being an artist is, cool. is that, uh, like whenever I made my SoundCloud or my Twitter or whatever, I, I was like, should I have like a, a, a name of a thing? Yeah. And I was really like, no. <laughs> it's you yeah yeah and and it's all me and yeah. even even through the podcast is that i'm i'm trying to radiate this just genuineness but also like uh anything yeah so but it's it, anything that is you yeah you know, exactly that, that, and so out, yeah. so i have i have like ambient music that i make i have yeah. songs i'm a songwriter and uh and you know i'm working on my masters in composition so like i have chamber music so but it's all still me like just just because i i wrote a a string quartet doesn't mean that the the songs are any different yeah in in a way yeah absolutely and so it really is all me and my my goal at the start of going to acm was a I want to compose music for video games. Okay. And I still want to compose music for video games. Sure. Um, but now I, I bet it's just one of the things on the list. Right. Yeah. Of like the, the sort of pinnacle. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, because it, it's, again, it's kind of all the same thing. I'm with you. Like, so if, yeah. if I were to, you know, make music for a video game, that's, that's a, a project or a job that would be just a whole other part of like, yeah, I would be a part of whatever development studio that I would be sure. with. Sure. Um, and making that music, but it's also, it's also a part of me. It's still an influence and whatever they need. It's still a musical thing that I'm creating. And so that's a fun thing though, yeah. because in a lot of ways you'll be, it's, it's similar to what I'm talking about. You'll be able to look back and go like, 
wow, that was that was a lot of different stuff, but it, I'm just yeah. doing what I'm interested in. Exactly. You know? And uh, I feel like a lot of a lot of artists might get like pigeonholed in in totally. like oh, well, since we make this, then we can't go over here and, That's exactly and right. yeah. they they lose a lot of uh I've been listing like Lincoln Park is an example of like Oh, they they started out as this rap rock thing, mm -hmm. and then as they like merged away from that, people were like, "What are you doing? This yeah. isn't." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you can't do this. So it's, this doesn't uh, play by our rule book, exactly. Or whatever. Yeah. And so, I I want to start as fluid, so that once more fluidity happens, people aren't Very like, cool. "Oh, what are you doing?" It's yeah. it's more like, yeah, it's. It's always been. Well, I mean, <laughs> and, and, you know, like artists are pigeonholed by other people and artists pigeonhole themselves too sure. a lot of times when they, they get a little bit of information, but not all of it, right? Mm -hmm. Because you are pigeonholed for a very specific reason. And that's a marketing reason. Yeah. It's easier to tell a lot of people what you're like if we can narrow it down to, you know, a two second elevator pitch or sure. whatever it is. <laughs> but then an artist will learn that and like, okay, we need to figure that out. Yeah. And we're willing to lose sight of the entire grand scheme of what we're wanting to do just so we can fit in mm -hmm. and sell some things or whatever. And so they'll pigeonhole themselves. Yeah. From the beginning, you know, like, like I was talking about, if your ambitions are aligned, like if you know, you want to do a lot of things that are scattered mm -hmm. and there might not be a lot of people that have done that before you, or mm. they are, there are a lot of people, but there may be small circles of people that sure. even know who they are. Yeah. Then you can start to get a, a clear idea. Like, okay, this is how this goes. Like mm -hmm. maybe I'm not going to make, you know, a million dollars of the first thing that I release <laughs> sure. and it funds everything from then on and right. life is easy or whatever. And then you can start making those decisions and that's, that's the cool thing about yeah. it. Then you're led by what you actually want to do and not what you have to do to get by. Exactly. And, and that's, that's kind of why, I mean, cause I know I'm going to continue to grow as a musician and I'm going to find different interests along that's the right. way. And uh, at least I, I'm lucky enough to have realized this early enough yeah. to, to be able to go. Like, I, I know I'm not going to be entirely. When did that happen? Where did that happen? Um, so whenever I, um, I, I studied at UCO for vocal music education for two years. Cool. Um, and then I... Because the plan was like, oh, I, I want to like have music teacher as like a backup plan for whenever I like start doing composition for video games or yeah. whatever. Because I know that it's difficult. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but then um, my last semester there, it wasn't my last semester, but it was my last semester there. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I took uh, <laughs> I know a history goes. of video game music. Uh, oh, cool. With, uh, uh, now, Doctor Hannon, um, yeah, but you had done that. Was that during an intersession or something like that, or does no, he teach it, a regular it regular semester as well? Uh, he teaches it regular semester. Oh, okay, now. great, because I'd um, seen it offered a couple times. Yeah, cool. Well, um, it was the first one. Yeah, um, that was the first time he taught it. Then. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, and so I took that, and I was like, "Yeah, I do want to <laughs> compose music for video yeah, games." Yeah, that's what I want to do. But but I had this sort of nebulous idea of like. Okay, so music teacher, uh, composition for video games, and, like, I had also had this idea for... Because I'd, I'd already written songs at that point, yeah. too. And so I was like, what am I going to do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it was music teacher the, like, okay, there's my steady. Or yeah, there, exactly. Or there's one for the fam, for the parents, <laughs> or, you know, that... Yeah, it was right? pretty much that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and it's not that I don't, like... No. to teach music because the the experiences that I've had through that program have, like I really do enjoy teaching music. Absolutely. Um but um it it became sort of like okay, well what am I going to do? And and so over time it solidified whenever I came here for music production and started figuring out like, oh, this is this really is what I want totally. to be doing. Um it it rather than sort of become clearer sort of in a in a hallway, it sort of became clearer as just like a <laughs> landscape yeah. of things that I could do. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> that's that's the idea. You yeah. Know? You start digging in a little bit and you're like, oh wait a second. Right, yeah. There's so much more here. Yeah. And especially with the way that the industry is now, it it is a lot better to look at it as a landscape rather totally. than as 
a, a hallway because, yeah, you can be like, uh, I used to play trombone, but like, yeah, I could be like the best trombone player ever, but like, I know that it's a lot harder to like just be <laughs> yeah. a trombone player. Just be a trombone yeah, player. Yeah. yeah, because like, you know, the difference between the like the greatest and the second, you know, like that might be a long distance. Like the greatest yeah. is up here, the second best person is <laughs> way down below. But the person right after second, there's 300 million people exactly. that are exactly like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and not to be a capitalist or, you know, whatever, just, <laughs> just worried about money, but... You know, how much money does the best trombone player in the world make? Sure. You know what I mean? And if that's that's what you want to do, that one thing, like, mm -hmm. that's a lot of con concentration on one thing. I, yeah. I'm just, I'm interested in too many things. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, I like the, the well-diversified portfolio. So yeah. Well. And it's it's funny because as soon as I graduated high school, I was like, my goal was kind of, I want to be an artist. Like yeah. I want to be a musician or be a singer or whatever. Yeah. Uh, voice is my primary instrument. And so like my favorite band was and still is Radiohead. And, oh, like, cool. Graduating from high school, I was like, I want to be Radiohead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's it. Like we pigeonhole ourselves early on because we're like, that's, I want that. Yeah. I want that thing or whatever. You learn a little bit and it starts to explode <laughs> and you go like, oh, wow, okay, I'm actually more like them now than exactly. I was when I only worshipped them. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, when they were the only thing I wanted to be, mm -hmm. I knew the least about them. Yeah. yeah as, as artists, you know? Yeah. And so being Radiohead in a way is seems like a more feasible option now that I have all of the other options, totally. too. <laughs> well, I mean, and the, and the number of things that those guys do in different ways and things you, yeah. some you hear about, some you don't, some are critically acclaimed a year later when a film mm -hmm. comes out, you know, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> you, start, you start to figure that out, and you go like, oh, okay. So it's really about having a lot of irons in the fire, mm -hmm. doing everything to your best ability, uh, yeah. of your ability, you know, uh, but only doing things that you're interested in mm -hmm. because we know that doing the opposite just doesn't, I mean, unless you absolutely have to do it to pay the bills, which is a, yeah. a period of time for me, it was about 15 years of doing that type of stuff mm -hmm. uh, until I could support myself off of music. But yeah, uh, you're, I was always, you know, slowly chipping away at night yeah. to get closer to that thing. <laughs> but I mean, I, I think you really said it in the fact that it's like, Oh, it, it, it didn't narrow down. It didn't get easier for me to figure out what I wanted to do. It got, easier for me to accept the fact that I'm probably going to be doing different things all the <laughs> yeah. time. Yeah. I mean, just from that, you know, like I, you asked me kind of the things that I did and I've, I've forgotten a lot of them. You know, I've just remembered <laughs> a few of them in between I mean, stuff I've even done this summer, like uh, jumped into to promotion and promoted my own dance party with a former student, actually. Mm -hmm. um, Augustine from uh, Morales from, mm -hmm. from, uh, well, you know, right? From, yeah, yeah. Uh, so he was in the production department up here as well. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it like a month ago, that was my life. Mm -hmm. You know, like everything I was doing was to promote it and make sure it came off successful. Uh, and we're planning the next one now. But, uh, you know, if you asked me in a month, like what I did this summer, I probably wouldn't mm -hmm. list it because it's just, there's a lot of other stuff that happened yeah. as well. So that's <laughs> one amazing thing about iCal is I can go back through it and go like, Okay, so my dean review is coming up. Like, what did I do in the last year? <laughs> like, okay, played this such and such a festival, played this TV show, promoted this party. You know, yeah. you start to go through it and collect it, and you go like, oh wow, I don't give myself enough credit. You know, mm. I wake up every day and compare myself to a couple of thousand different people that I see come <laughs> across Instagram, and mm -hmm. they all accomplished something today or yesterday or something sure. huge in their life, and you compare yourself against it. And you're like, man, I'm not doing anything. And then you, right. kinda, you get a bit of a retrospective and you're like, oh, what did, what did I do this year? Oh, okay. Looks pretty good sure. again, you know? Yeah. You got you to gotta make sure that you don't compare yourself to other people too much. You're right. You know? um, it's kind of funny. I mean, like, right now I'm sort of keeping that at bay because, like, I'm, I'm still in school. And so I know that my time is mostly being put into that. Sure. And so, like, oh, I could be doing this. I could be doing this. But it's like just priority number one yeah. is like graduating yeah. getting like doing good work in school mm -hmm. absolutely <laughs> resting when you can and any spare <laughs> moment spending on your career you yeah know? and so uh but uh, uh, there's still room for fun stuff dude there's uh, so much room that's one thing i can't tell students enough 
is that you'll never have as much time as you have when you're in college mm. because this is the hardest thing you've ever done to date. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you can't know possibly what it's going to be like to have a 40 hour a week job. And on top of that, spending all day and all night trying to make your career happen. You mm-hmm. know? Uh, now, don't get me wrong. I know a lot of students work full time and go to school. Yeah. But <laughs> they don't work full time and really put in what it has to happen, what the amount of hours that have to happen mm-hmm. for you to have a career in it. They weren't doing that before they came to school. Yeah. You know? And they want they want to go to school to to make it to where they don't have to work as hard. And I get I get all that. I totally understand mm-hmm. it. All I'm saying is, once you work all day and you're tired, you don't <laughs> want to work as hard at night on your passion, and mm-hmm. it will slowly dull your reaction to that passion. You know. Yeah. And you start a lot of times finding ways to drum that passion out. Mm-hmm. You know, to to make it. I mean. Maybe it would be easier. Maybe it would be easier if, like, if I could just remove this chip that was like, sure. well, you're an artist and you like to do stuff yeah. um, that you don't know how to do, and it's <laughs> probably going to cost more money than you make off of it. Mm. If I could take that out, that'd be kind of cool. You know, like <laughs> if you could just take it out and go, like, what's this going to be like? You know, it's like a lobotomy. You know, but um, I've joked about that before. Like, what? Are, why am I doing this again? Like, oh yeah, it sounded cool. And now I'm in it and yeah. it's like really, really hard. And then after <laughs> yeah. it, and you got to tell yourself when you're in that spot, like next week when this thing is over, when mm. like you've done it and you can assess it, did it go well, did it not, whatever, you're still going to be happy that you did it, mm-hmm. you know? And that's, that's what I have to tell myself when I'm in the middle of that stuff. So right now, tell yourself like, I know I'm in it mm-hmm. and it seems like I can't do anything else. But I have more free time right now than I'll ever have, mm-hmm. you know, um, getting out. And, oh, man, I, mean, I, I got out of school out of OSU. And I worked for EMU for a while mm. um, before they went out of business. Um, <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about? EMU, I'm like the sure. EMU modular um, was like the, the first, like, modular oh, okay. synthesizer. Oh, yeah, yeah. One of them. Um, but then they went on to make, like, the legendary EMU SP-12. Mm. Uh, SP-1200, it's a... a drum a sampler you know cool. was used in hip hop and stuff like that but uh I mean, tons of electronic music just extremely influential but by the time I started working for them they were kind of chasing the market instead of leading it a little bit mm-hmm. they were trying to release you know a USB um interface when firewire was the thing and then mm-hmm. by the time we launched it USB 2.0 came out and firewire didn't even make sense we were working on a firewire thing so kind yeah. of writing was on the wall a little bit but I was working with some of the most brilliant people mm-hmm. and really putting all my time in but um i was trying to tour at the same time you know and it, when i was working 40 hours a week even though it was flexible and they'd allow me to tour i was sitting at a screen working with pro tools on a mac you know mm-hmm. and beta testing whether it was um keyboards or these interfaces or i was doing a lot of sound qa mm-hmm. so that we'd release like sound banks and i'd listen to them for pops you know what i mean mm-hmm. just like yeah. after being in front of a, a, a uh, an interface or a computer and you know working with music all day i didn't want to go home and do that right. any longer and i started to realize like man when i didn't get to do this all day long yeah. i hungered for it at night you know mm-hmm. and now that i have to do this like maybe it's a little too close to what i'm doing <laughs> you know what i mean yeah but that you know they, they they went out of business and made that decision for me it was the day that color music opened for the flaming lips at d fest in tulsa uh all, I was gone loading in and playing mm-hmm. the festival and all my buddies came to the show that night. They were like, they walked us out, man. Like it's <laughs> over. Like they're giving us equipment. Like it's, we don't have jobs anymore. I was like, Whoa, well, okay. I really like doing this. So I'm going to yeah. keep doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a, kind of a perfect time. You know? Yeah. Um, I do have like, I guess one more question. Uh, yeah, yeah. Aiden McCool had asked me this, but like, how do you, deal with it all like how you organize it or how do you just keep track of it <laughs> uh i mean that's uh, that's a great question i've spent you know the better part of two or three years trying to figure that out <laughs> uh my best answer to date is uh this is actually given to me by Derek brown who's um uh, mm. i mean for one thing one of the people i look up to the most because mm. if anybody thinks that i'm busy they gotta look at that dude you know what i mean <laughs> like um but this came from him and and I was like just struggling. I was just like, man, I don't, you know, I don't know if I can do it all. I really do want to teach and play in the band and do this other thing and this and that or whatever. Yeah. It's like, how do you, how do you do this all? Because like, I think I'm busy and I know you're way busier than I am. Mm. 
And he said, you just got to do what screams at you. I was like, what do you mean? It's like, well, you know, a lot of people um, really, really need something immediately or whatever. And you get back with them and you never hear from them again or whatever. That's not that big of a deal, obviously, you know, or maybe you don't get back to them and you never get another email. You know, you never get anything from you. It's not that important to them. You know, maybe the email sounds like it, but they have no follow through and they don't actually need that from you. And then other things like it has a deadline and, you know, your job depends on it. Or sure. you're playing a show tomorrow, you need to rehearse tonight. You right. know, those sort of things, just take it as it comes. And once when you see something that really bums you out, try not to look at it, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm definitely expanding on it now, but, you know, I'll take breaks from stuff. And yeah. It's cool because the people that I talk to about it, like Ryan, for, for instance, you know, I'm in a band with Ryan. And uh, he also works with me at the school. Mm. And if he sends me something that, you know, he's thinking of for way down the line, it's like six months out or something with the yeah. school, and I don't respond to it, he goes, cool. I know it's not that important. Mm. It's not that important to him, so it shouldn't be that important to me. That's not really the way that most people work, though. Mm. You know, they're like, <laughs> give me this. I need this. I need this. I need this. Yeah. Oh, wait. Okay. It turns out I don't need it. You know, like that, that's, sort yeah, of, that's yeah. what most things are. So. You just get a little bit better with your barometer of like, all right, what's sink or swim mm -hmm. and what, you know, doesn't need to happen today. Yeah. I'm really bad at prioritizing it. Well, I'm, I'm really good at prioritizing things. I, I make everything a number one priority, <laughs> <laughs> which sucks, you know, <laughs> and it works you into a place to where you're your best self for people you care the least about. Does mm. that make sense? So when you get home, you know, you've given away everything, you yeah. know, every nicety and every, you know, great thing that you could have done that day. You've spent it all on other people. Mm -hmm. And then you get home and your family gets to find out that you're just kind of an asshole because <laughs> you're doing things for other people all day and you didn't save any of yourself for them. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you do what screams at you. You start saying no to stuff. Mm. So start saying no to shit. Yes. <laughs> you know, don't take shit and don't do shit. And what I mean is like, don't do stuff that you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, be really honest with yourself about it. Is this a narcissistic thing? Am I doing this only so, you know, people will see me or this and that, or mm. is this really going to make me happy? And that goes back to that earlier advice of knowing yourself, but yeah. be able to say no, have fun saying no, say, yeah. it, say it in a nice way. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, I blame it on my wife all the time. I'd be like, well, I promised my wife I wouldn't take anything else on, you know, and that's <laughs> a real thing. You know, I, I definitely did. Uh, but if it's something I really, really want to do, it'll make its way through, you know, sure. I'll, I'll do it, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Um, be organized though. Yeah. You know, like I was four minutes late up here and that bugged me, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, um, but you're the type of person that, um, well, you texted me like right as I was parking or whatever, like I'm on the fourth floor. Just you were thinking about like, oh, this is the thing I care about. I'm glad this person's here. I'm going to tell them exactly where I am because sometimes you're in another room or mm -hmm. whatever. It's that sort of thing. You know, you, you, <laughs> you know, like you want to work with certain people. I wanted to do this with you because I knew it would be awesome. I wouldn't. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it wouldn't be this thing of like. You know, what's your favorite color? <laughs> you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be that sort of thing. All of them. You're yeah, in a band yeah, called yeah, Color yeah, Music. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I don't want to pick one. Um, so committing to things that you believe are worthwhile and, and listening to people from time to time too, you know. Mm. It's one of the things like, you know, with, with our recent days is like, yeah, we should respect our elders. We should listen to them. But at the same time, we should also listen to our youth, mm -hmm. you know. Like, yes, you were a teenager once, but you weren't a teenager today. And to yeah. say that your teenage life 20, 30 years ago <laughs> yeah. is there anything like today, mm. you lost your damn mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> we, can't, we can't have any clue what our teenagers are going through right now. Mm -hmm. and, and I have a little bit of a clue because I meet them a few years you know, after when they come in as students and I start going like, whoa, okay, mm -hmm. that's cool. Mm -hmm. But you're here with me now and like it or not, you're going to learn something, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, at some point, you know, your kids are going to be able to come back and teach you something. So being open to that as well. So, yeah, yeah my thing is, all right, secret to doing a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Do what screams at you. Yeah. Learn to say no and listen to people from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. It can be <laughs> so easy to just go like, nope, I know how that's going to turn out. Not going to do it. This and that. If somebody goes like, you should really check this thing out, though. Or 
you should really listen to this person, whatever it is. Or mm-hmm. if they just convince you with, you know, with themselves, you know, the way that they present themselves, the way they handle themselves, the business that they do, the, the things that they've done before, mm-hmm. you might take a chance on something that you would have unilaterally ruled out before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, stay open. I like that. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. Uh, Absolutely, man. <laughs> uh, Thank yeah. you. I mean, this is fun. <laughs> it's therapeutic anyway, and it's cool to talk about this yeah. stuff. Yeah, and um, I think hopefully it's it's valuable to whoever is listening to this <laughs> and not just us. Yeah, absolutely. If you get one thing, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, we're talking kind of fast. You can go back and listen to yeah. it again. <laughs> yeah, that's a great part about it. I mean, no lie. I mean, I've learned so, so much um, – about this industry through podcasts and mm-hmm. not not directly related podcasts. I mean, w- one of the ones that I listen to religiously is is uh, a WTF. You know, what the fuck with Mark Marin, mm-hmm. and he's constantly talking to to industry people in there. You know, yeah, and that stuff crosses from industry to industry. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. uh, whether you're a comedian, you're a musician, or whatever, what they focus on there the most, whether it's w- w- whether I mean, I think Mar- Mark's cognizant of it now. Uh, But at the time, like when they're in the interview, the things that they're discussing are are like human nature. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting. Yeah. But it's human nature mixed with this really ego driven business, you know? (laughs) So it makes it so insanely interesting in the decisions that people make and Mm. how some stupid decision turned out to be this triumphant thing Mm -hmm. or you said this tiny little thing that ruined your life or your career, whatever it was, yeah. you know, you start, they, they chase down this sort of chain of events of like, wait, so you decided to be a stand up, <laughs> and then you didn't move anywhere. You just did it, you know, in the, in the area or whatever. And you started getting advice from these people that were coming through. Like everybody's story is totally different. Yeah. And the only common thread that, you, that I can draw through all of them is that these people did rather than talk you know Mm -hmm. whatever it was like as long as you get busy doing Mm -hmm. instead of sitting around and talking about it or um more importantly talking shit you know talk uh, like that that weird thing that happens this is another thing this will bring us closer together (laughs) um that weird thing that happens that like when you feel insecure about yourself instead of going back and practicing or doing better or spending Mm -hmm. that time and effort helping yourself Mm -hmm. you like to level it by bringing other people down with you (laughs) that's that's an illness man until that goes away or Mm. people realize it in themselves like it's going to be a tough one but i'll take the doers over the talkers all day long you know like how many times in your life have you decided (laughs) you were going to do something you knew nothing about (laughs) you know and at the time it was like yeah and then you Mm -hmm. get in it and then you're like oh yeah i forgot i don't know how to do this yeah and then after it, you're really proud of yourself, mm-hmm. you know, having all the answers or knowing exactly how to do it, all that stuff's overrated, man. <laughs> and just because you went to school for it doesn't mean you're going to know how mm-hmm. to do it, you know? Yeah. It just means that, especially with a bachelor's degree, not a master's degree, but right. a bachelor's degree, it means that you can teach yourself how to do things for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. And if you thought that the end goal was just to get a peeper, piece of paper to get a job, <laughs> then you didn't really learn anything at all. Yeah. You know, but, uh, yeah, you know, with a master's <laughs> degree, you can start to attempt to master something. You know? Sure. Yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> but a bachelor's degree, it means that, yeah, I could probably teach myself to do anything I want from here on out. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, learn something new every day. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, thank you Dude, again. Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. Where can we find you and your things? Um, okay, so, uh, and the last one, what did I say? If you go to flaminglips.com. If you go to colormusic.net or if you want to buy our new record, yeah, um, it's you can email info at colormusic.net, uh, brothersgreen.com, uh, and that's the, our, our DJ sets, our parties and stuff that we throw. With three eyes. Yeah, with three <laughs> eyes, that's right. Uh, Burryloop.com uh, is this international dance party that I was talking about yeah. a little bit earlier that uh, started with um, Augustine and, and Waylon Clark. Um yeah, I know, there's something else that I'm missing, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. ACM, check out ACM. Yeah. <laughs> Come find me here. I'll, I'll meet with you. I'll talk with you. I'll do whatever. It's Great. just, yeah, I like to do that stuff. So, 
It's pretty easy <laughs> to get a hold of me. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm, well, yeah, I'll do the normal outro. I'm you gotta Santiago do it. You, you got to do it. I'm <laughs> Nick Lay. <laughs> uh, you can find everything that I do on my website, SantiagoRamones.com. I make music. You can download, buy, whatever, pay money or not uh, for my demo, which is Songs with Words. Um, and you can download this podcast. You can listen to it through Apple Podcasts on YouTube or on Stitcher. Um, I think Spotify doesn't get back to people about the podcast. I guess that, it's going to take know. a little while. Yeah, I don't know. I think they just started doing it. So <laughs> yeah, um, they're just doing larger names at first. Sure. You know, which bring more people to right. the, to the subscription service. <laughs> so it makes sense. But uh, yeah, soon I imagine like just like they finally opened up the artist side. Mm. Uh, where you can change your picture and do yeah, all kinds of cool that? stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That'll come for podcasts after a while. <laughs> right. Um, Spotify yeah. is a tiny company, so I'll go off on a tangent. Yeah, yeah. This, but it's a really small Real company. Small. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, and on all of those things, Apple Podcasts, YouTube and stuff, you can comment, leave ratings and reviews, and that stuff helps and uh, helps me to know uh, what people think of this program that has been going on for more than a year. Um, I always have my podcast with my three things. They shape my life philosophy. Those three things are love never fails. It's going to be okay. I might be wrong. 